we got some hockey experts in this house one more than the other no offense spencer but you will yeah you wouldn't take offense to that of course the Detroit Red Wings, they started off their four-game road trip last night with an 8-4 to four loss to the Edmonton Oilers. This was a game in which, going into the third period, it was tied at three, and then it all just kind of fell apart. But was, what was also notable about last night's game, there were two things. One for the Detroit Red Wings, Ville Husso, their goaltender, who last year was their best goaltender and this year was having a bit of a disappointing season, probably more than a bit. He goes out early in the game right after coming back from injury, and of course, and this is something that's just going to happen sometimes when you go up against the best of the best. Connor McDavid, six assists, just mm. absolutely unbelievable. And of course, you got Dreisaitl there, who's who was phenomenal as well, had a goal and an assist. So, D Mac, are you? Is this the type of game that worries you about the Detroit Red Wings, or was just this just a spot of one of the all-time greats had an all-time great game, and the Red Wings will be just fine? Because Edmonton's a tough place to play. No, I told you yesterday. I mean, the worst <laughs> thing. This was probably the easiest bet for Edmonton and the over of the of the year. Why is that breaking down? Edmonton had gone into the All-Star break with a 16-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to tie the record um, in L.A. on Saturday, last Saturday night or whatever, and they got shut out for nothing. There was a viral clip of Connor McDavid breaking sticks on the bench in frustration, Ooh. right? Um, with what that team has put together and the mission that the Edmonton Oilers are on and, and the window, the they're sort of at their end of their window you know coming back home going out out west now the the, the biggest concern and the biggest thing is look at how, the way alex lyon's played and billy husso's coming back so alex lyon is like i got the night off yeah right and i'm hoping for billy husso to, to uh you know to be rocking his stuff and then unfortunately you know coming back from a lower body injury and stuff like that um you can recur injuries so so you saw that now you, you mentioned the fact that you know it was 3-3 going into the third um the, again you you win a period you win a game but everything sort of sort of fell apart so it it sort of played out the way that that i had that on the list like i told everybody yesterday is don't expect to win um not saying that you couldn't not saying you weren't in a position but this is a game that and this is a road trip right where i said yesterday where you're trying to get half the points four points in eight in out of eight or five out of ten just to keep pace so this isn't a big loss but again now it makes the game in vancouver tonight that much more imperative and, and that much harder so you never want that like i said it's the nhl so things it, it's going to be tough but I don't look at it. I, I see in the chat thread, yeah, you're frustrating. You didn't get the goaltending performance that you wanted, but you, if you're the Detroit Red Wings and you're Coach Lalonde or whatever, you've quickly got to erase that because you got to go out and find a way to get two points tonight. Yeah, and uh, Detroit Tabber in the chat, tough team for Huso to come back to as well. That's a hell of a reward if you're Billy Huso and the fact that Injury was kind of added to insult. Tough night for him. Tough night for and, the Re yeah. And here's the point, yeah. right? Detroit yeah. Dabber three one three. Yeah. Uh, first in again. I saw you there, Dabber. Way to go. But uh, you know, here's the problem. Because <clears throat> Tor Tampa, Toronto, New Jersey, they all win. Mm. So you you it's like yeah. keeping pace. Is that like you can get away sometimes too? So last night, if we would have lost, and all these other teams would have lost, then it doesn't doesn't hurt you. But again, that's why you have that cushion now that cushion of whatever points from the team chasing you has now shrunk you know i'd mentioned yesterday that uh uh new jersey had been going through a losing streak while they got off the snide so i mean it's going to be this way down to the final games but uh they just got to find a way to win and and I mean, it's a no-brainer. You, you give up eight goals. Yeah. You don't lose. You give up four, you're going to lose. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes you're just going to, one of the all-time greats like Connor McDavid is going to have one of those games. I mean, if the Tigers, and I'm not and I'm not making excuses or anything like that, but that is a loss that I think the Red Wings can withstand for the record. But let's just say this year, for example, that the Tigers are in a playoff race. And I don't even know if they play this team, but they go to Los Angeles and play the Dodgers. And Shohei Otani pitches seven shutout, shutout in 
innings and goes two for four with maybe a three-run home run and a double. You just kind of tip your cap and say, good game, fella. And that's kind of what it, what it was with uh, with um, Connor McDavid. And even to a lesser extent this season when the Lions went to Baltimore. Obviously, that was a terrible, horrible loss. But you could, you could uh, kind of put it behind you really fast because it was MVP Lamar Jackson having one of the best passing games of his career against against the Lions. So not making excuses, it's just sometimes you're going to lose these type of games. And I think to me, what this game highlighted was how <laughs> important it was to get that comeback win on Saturday against Vancouver at home. Boom. Absolutely unbelievable, which uh, capped off a 10-2-2 stretch, which really put them right back into the playoff race. And I think Edmonton is one that you can drop, but this also makes the games like, at Vancouver, of course, more important. But at Calgary and Seattle, those are not playoff teams. Those are teams that the Red Wings can get. And I agree with you. Four points on this four-game road trip, and you don't really have to worry about what other teams are doing. You can just kind of say, we held serve, everything's fine. But anything less than that, and it's a little bit of a disappointment, even with the cushion that they've been able to build for themselves. No, but you nailed it, like, right there. Is that That's why... That's why that game the other night against Vancouver, because now yeah. if you look back in your last 15 games, you're 10, three and two, and you're feeling good about yourself, yes. but you got to start it again. And you, um, like I said, you can't, you just got to go out there and get, if you're getting points and that's why even that, even losing in overtime, getting that point, it's so imperative at the end of the year, how many times Spenny in the past, in this Batman hockey age or whatever, are we waiting until the last week of the year? There's three games left. There's six teams. There's yeah. a point. There's a team that's like, oh, man, there's a, you know, oh, if we would have won this game or held this lead and stuff. So it's, did you, so bottom line, were you, did yesterday's game throw you off or it, it was sort of a spot, wasn't no, it? No, it was a spot, definitely. Like you said, you had a red hot Edmonton team going into that LA game where they got shut out and they were going to come back for a vengeance. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the Red Wings were in their crosshairs. You got Hyman, who's the leader of goals on their team. I think he's got 32 now not getting checked by Petrie for some reason, and he just gets an easy poke in in front of the net that kind of put the game out of reach for the Red Wings. And I just, I, I don't like to see it, but also it kind of exposed what we already knew about the Red Wings and where they don't really have a second goaltender, especially now with Huso getting injured again. I'm not sure the update on what that is, but hopefully he's not out for too long. But the the back end of that defense, man, I mean, the front four is solid. The first four is solid. But other than that, like, I, I'm not... I can't see Petrie on the ice anymore. <laughs> I'm over Jeff Petrie and what he's doing. So we need something there. That's what we talked about, Chicken. We've talked about them possibly making a trade for somebody. But it's when you're going up against top flight talent like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and Hyman, those guys are going to get exposed, exposed even yesterday. more. Yeah. You got exposed to the weakness of what it is. And, you know, if the, the analogy of the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference is that the East or the West is, you know, more open more you know got more of the skaters and you know stuff like that um but i think that's it exposed your weaknesses were exposed and again here's the thing right we can put the puck in the net you score yeah. four goals you should be able to win mm -hmm. hockey games it's, it's we're just back in the, this is going to be the question that's always there who's going to keep the puck um out of the net so you know, the imperativeness of who's so going down, will, will things change? I don't know, but, uh, you know, maybe we pay a little bit more attention um, right now. Like a lot of things, I'm just, I was trying to think back in history. Sometimes things go down on this trip, right? You know, we're, we're cha where some changes are made or trades, you, it doesn't have to go down right to the trade deadline. So, um, and I know for a fact, that they understand the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. So whether that's a call up, you know, or or you know, it, it's a it's a move, something I'm sure that uh, you know Stevie's working the phones.